Hugh the Champ, one of Major League Rugby's newest champions, hops on the show this week. New England Free Jacks hooker Andrew Quatran joins us to talk about his championship season, his journey to the top, and of course, our favorite part, let him know where he's stacked up in the world of fantasy MLR. And let me tell you, you won't want to miss his reaction when he finds out how much he jumped in this year's rankings compared to 2022. The Fantasy Rucker Show starts right now. Where rugby and the world of fantasy sports collide. Welcome to the Fantasy Rucker Show. Bringing fantasy rugby to the masses. Talking all things rugby from the MLR to leagues around the world. We're on top of it. Headphones on, pads off. This is the Fantasy Rucker Show. Now, here are your hosts, Ryan Yee, Matt Yee, and Devin Vanderpool. What's up, everybody? This is episode number 74 of the Fantasy Rucker Show. Thank you so much for Fantasy Ruckers League members, our community members, and everyone else tagging along on this journey of trying to make fantasy rugby a reality in the MLR. I'm Ryan Yee. With me, as always, Matt Yee, Devin Vandy, Vandepool. And guys, got a jam-packed show on this one. Got a special guest on this one that we're super excited about. Uh, one Champion. of Major League Rugby's newest champions. Yes, that's right, Matt. Uh, but before we get into any of that, first weekend without any uh, without any Major League Rugby to, to entertain ourselves, no fantasy MLR, no fantasy playoff challenge. Uh, did you guys do all right? Did you guys do okay? I mean, I lived, look, I lived, didn't have to deal with the stresses of fantasy rugby, didn't have to deal with the stresses of being a fantasy rugby champion, you know. Uh, oh, my God. I don't know. I was coming down hard at the shakes. I had cold sweats. It was ridiculous. <laughs> I, I threw up once that- or twice. That's the answer I want to hear, Vandy. That's the answer one I want to hear. But uh, yeah, it, it's a weird feeling, man. Obviously, the, the the weekend after, obviously going through the the grind that is the the fantasy MLR season. It's always uh, an interesting one to have that first weekend where you're, you're just sitting there and you don't got any games to watch, you don't got any fantasy stats to wait for. Um, but nonetheless, uh, we're right into the thick of the off season, and there's a whole bunch to break down, including a whole bunch of great interviews like we have in this one. That's right. A new Major League Rugby champion is coming on this show. Andrew Quatran, New England Free Jack hooker. We're going to welcome him on very, very shortly here uh, to talk a little bit about his championship season coming off of that big time uh, MLR Shield winning victory over the San Diego Legion. Talk about his journey uh, to get to the top there. And obviously our favorite part of the show, uh, reveal to him his, uh, his fantasy performance and whether or not he made fantasy managers happy with that this season um but yeah it's gonna be super super fun stuff always love to have him on the show friend of the show um and we're super excited to talk yeah. with him very shortly i mean we, we hope we hope that he's a bit more happy this year than he was that he is was true earlier we, you know a year ago when we talked to him yeah we, well, the rankings we, he with, just the, a tad. if, if yeah, you just we'll, yeah we'll hope yeah, if you're if you're just to, uh, tuning in and starting to follow the fantasy records last season, uh, we had a little bit of uh, the, a limited uh, stat uh, number to go off of, and it wasn't necessarily the most front it wasn't quadrant row. friendly. It wasn't quadrant <laughs> friendly. It wasn't uh, it wasn't front row friendly, and I think we hit him with the uh, below 400 ranking. Yeah, something like um, that. And, <laughs> uh, he, he wasn't too happy about it, but I will say, big time improvements with the additional stats that we had this year. What and we I like think, to see. Uh, I think Q, exactly. I think Q is going to be very, very happy to see where he finished off this year. But we're going to get all into that very shortly. Uh, I'm going to break down a little bit of news and notes here as well as we start to roll through here in the offseason. But before we get into any of that, like we say every single time on the show, if you aren't already, follow us at the Fantasy Ruckers. We got the uh, the handles there up above on the YouTube screen. Uh, also in the details down below in the description if you're listening on the podcast. Um, a lot of super fun stuff uh, that come out on there. Um, also got our, our website, the Fantasy ruckers.com uh mm-hmm. that has all the stats there even if you're not a fantasy mlr junkie uh there's just a whole bunch of information to digest um that is really really a lot of fun for any any mlr fan and if all that's not enough for you also got a discord community that you can join where we got a lot of a lot of fun uh fun uh, uh fantasy ruckers community members that love to talk fantasy mlr but love to talk rugby in general as well um and and they've been a, a blast there so if, if you need another group to kind of uh vent about the end of the fantasy mlr season that's 
the place to do it. And that's where you'll all want to be following the socials, the discord, as well as we continue to try to make this a reality in the MLR, because uh, like we alluded to uh, a few weeks back when we had our interview with our website mastermind, Alistair Kirsch pool, the goal is, is to open up this to everyone who's interested in playing fantasy MLR. And we're hoping that can happen this upcoming 2024 season. And that's where you're going to hear about it all. So make sure you're doing all that, but uh, all right, let's hop into the show guys. Um, I think before we get to the interview with, uh, with Q uh, let, let's, let's talk a little bit of news and notes. And obviously uh, the news is a little bit on a downturn here uh, heading into the, the early portions of this off season, but nonetheless, uh, we still got some movement um, around the league. Uh, we will start off with some quick roster moves, nothing really of note, but I think just something for you to reiterate Matt about, uh, about kind of the, the operation of the MLR and how that affects fantasy as a whole. Uh, Connor McLeod uh, from the Utah Warriors, scrum out for the Utah Warriors, is going over to the, uh, compete in the NPC Bunnings Cup. He's going to Hawks Bay. Uh, Chris Hilsenbeck of Rugby Atlanta, uh, he's going over to the Pro D2 side. Not too sure how that will affect things. Um, and Luke Beauchamp of the Chicago Hounds, he's actually retiring a pretty formidable back rower um, that uh, had a, a decent fantasy impact in, uh, in prior seasons. He is hanging up the boots. So, um, I mean, when it comes to Connor McLeod and him going to the NPC uh, Bunnies Cup, uh, Matt, just reiterate kind of how that all operates for a whole bunch of guys. We mentioned a whole bunch of Florio moves last episode uh, who are going to the NPC Bunnies Cup, but fantasy managers shouldn't necessarily be worried. Yeah, I mean, these will probably start coming down in volume just as we get close to the MC- NPC Bunnies Cup season. But, uh, yeah, as I've said before, as I've said in the past, Shouldn't be a worry. Uh, You can expect most of these guys to come back for the uh, MLR season next year, um, unless they get picked to go to go to a super rugby side. And, you know, majority of these guys won't. uh, But we know that there has been the history of of a few guys that will get selected to be on those uh, super rugby sides. Absolutely. And I guess let's let's uh, then shift on over to the bigger news that we want to talk over um, in this one is that the uh, that Major League Rugby has announced it's all MLR selections for the 2023 season. Um, and, and obviously some big time names on this list. Uh, you got our yeah. first team, second team and honorable mentions in this one. And I think the biggest thing for me, every time we see these types of lists is how does it compare to our fantasy rankings yep. and our fantasy performances and to see a lot of these guys on this list also be guys that are represented in our top kind of uh fantasy rankings and the guys who are doing well in our in our in our in, in the world of fantasy mlr it's always a, a good parallel to see um here between the reality of mlr and fantasy mlr yeah i mean that's the exact way that i was looking at it and i mean the only place where i think for whatever reason, it seems that maybe our the way that our fantasy points going just doesn't pick up the full breadth of the game is like guys like Ben Lesage. I mean, he or Lesage, you know, he's not he's not sitting at the top of a lot of our, our center tables, but you have Duplessis, Meeks, Dan Creel sitting on the honorable mentions in the second team, right? Like these are guys that you would have thought, especially Creel and especially Duplessis, that you would have thought yeah. to be given first team guys, right? Um, but to see Lesage up there, I think that's the one that stood out to me of like, you know, maybe, you know, why, why isn't he showing up on ours? He does some things on the field that probably just doesn't, doesn't show up in the stat sheet. And, and, and there's going to be players like that. And I mean, everybody knows that he's a stud. Um, that, that was the only standard. But when you look at all the other positions, right? Like you see top guys from our league, you see yeah. top guys in their positions. You see Gala, you see Fawcett, like Conradi, Lance Williams, Richard Judd, Nate Ox, like all these guys, first team MLR, first team fantasy rucker team as well yeah no no kidding at all and and vandy when you see something like that obviously um in your experience uh in in other fantasy sports i think there's that same kind of notion is that a lot of guys a lot of guys will be captured in these first team mentions second team mentions who do reflect nicely um in in the world of fantasy mlr but there are some guys that sneak us uh sneak through that you know again don't get captured in that fantasy mlr or things but again it's it's reassuring to see some of these guys appearing on these lists also appearing on the top of our list there all right it mean it means we're doing a pretty good job but you know kind of touch on what maddie said you know it's not all about what fantasy is it, it, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes there's a lot that goes on in the field you know, even guys will say it, you know, I'm sure Q will mention in our interview, so they might not show up on the fantasy, uh, um, uh, you know, top 10 weekly. But, you know, as far as what they add to the field, even without, you know, getting fantasy points is why the reason they're up there. Yeah. And, and I mean, the big one for me, though, looking at this is boys. Like, I get it. Riker Haddings, yeah. Riker Hadding. The guy was out for half the season. 
Boyson played every game. Yeah. Boyson played 80 minutes almost every game. That guy deserves to be sitting in that uh in that honorable mention spot at least. Uh but you look at the competition at the eight position, that's a tough one, but I think Boyson should really be there. Um yeah. but you know, it is what it is. We got our boy Co there. Vandy, buddy, Mano couldn't crack. You you would have thought that Mano would be able to crack that. You know, team, I would, that's a, that's a you one, just eh? stole it out of my, like, I was just about to mention, you know, I, I don't want to say even at 10, you know, I thought, uh, I thought my boy Joel Hodgson was going to take it, but yeah. Pachos look good. I mean, you know, I'm not upset yeah. about it. He got the honorable mention, but I'm re- yeah, I'm really surprised you don't see uh, Joe up there. That, that, that wing position, that back three, like, that was lethal this year. I mean, oh. you could, it's really a toss up between Mano and, and Oxberger, you know, like, well, even, but fantasy aside, like just in the, in the play. Yeah. Well, Hey, we got, we got to mention a couple guys there though, that did make it to this all MLR slash friends of the shows. Yeah. Making yeah. it on these lists. And that's a big time thing here. Obviously Andrew Coe making on the list and that honorable mention at that wing mm-hmm. spot. He had a pretty solid season and the guy that we're just about to have yeah. on here shortly, Thank Andrew you. Quatrid making it as the honorable mention for that hooker position in uh, the all MLR selection. So pretty exciting stuff. We'll obviously talk to him a little bit about that, but yeah, I mean, we're tailing towards the, obviously the off season. This is the stuff that we're going to be talking about. Um, but again, uh, as, as has been alluded online, James Dealey, uh, MLR stats, uh, and a participant of the fantasy Rutgers league has said that he, he wouldn't be surprised and Matt, you kind of alluded to it that he starts seeing some more roster moves being announced maybe it won't have an effect in that 2024 year uh but but at least is going to have some movement of guys having some off-season rugby experience overseas which uh should be coming down um in in the next uh, couple couple weeks or so but uh, until then um yeah the, the, these all mlr selections is what we're going to pick at but uh, all right guys it's time it is time to bring on a guy that we've been wanting to talk to for quite some time Let's here, go. ever since that final, ever since of racking up his first MLR ma- uh, Major League Rugby Championship. Uh, we're so happy and so stoked. Uh, it's now time to bring on a uh, friend of the show, Andrew Quatrin. And we are stoked to have second time guest here on the Fantasy Rucker Show. And of course, friend of the show. And now newest, one of the newest, I should say, Major League Rugby Champions, New England Free Jacks hooker, Andrew Quatrin. Q, hey, it's, it, it's good to have you back on the show, man. I mean, uh, we spoke to you uh, probably less than a year ago, um, and obviously you're on the move from Toronto to New England, and how how so much has changed since then, man. You got you got a, now a championship under your belt. How does it feel? Yeah, it's sweet. I mean, um, yeah, it's been crazy. Eh? The past week, it's been awesome. Um, yeah, it's amazing. What could I like? Yeah, it's it'll it'll probably sink in when when everyone we're solo and we're no longer together. Um, but yeah, it was awesome. It was such a surreal feeling. We had a parade on Saturday. It was crazy. It was it was electric. We're we're gonna we're gonna definitely talk about all that. We're gonna talk about the championship matchup. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna talk about the crazy season it was for the New England Free Jacks. Um, and of course, uh, get into a little bit of fantasy stuff. We're obviously this is one of our favorite parts too, um, of the show and and bringing you guys on is is getting your reaction on how you fared, uh, during this year in terms of a fantasy <laughs> perspective. So it'll be interesting to to kind of get your reaction in terms of uh of how you how you did amongst the other uh, players around the league and the other front rowers. Uh, so you can start cooking your brain maybe who you think maybe finished a little bit ahead of you where you slotted in that it'll be interesting to see but before we get into it uh, the latest news uh, that we talked about at the start of the show Q um, we got to say big congratulations obviously we got to congratulate you on the championship but man uh, honorable mention on the all MLR selection at that hooker spot there um, I mean I think it just goes to show you how how great of a season you really had in 2023 uh, feel good to kind of get that recognition here um, at the tail end of the season I mean um Geez, like all the hookers in the league are, league are like sweet. Like even Millsy, like me and Millsy, I think just complement each other so well. Um, he is just such a tank around the park. And <laughs> and um, I think he's just like, he's he's so deserving of that. But no, a ton of good boys in there. And I'm, I'm honored to be in there. Um, uh, I think maybe just might have just been the luck of the draw. But no, um, it's, it's, I think um individually yeah it's great it's 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 cool it's awesome yeah hey, how much how much do those mean to you like for i know the you know the all mlr team for the season but also you know the the mlr team of the week stuff like how much do you take that to heart and kind of take that as a you know a, a, a recognition type uh type award or is it just kind of you know whatever on to the next one yeah i think 
Um, if I'm being honest, I don't think um, I really pay attention to it. Like it's it's cool, but I find you know I'll, I'll personally feel like I had a sweet game, and um, you know the, we might have not scored any tries in the mall, and and you're not mm-hmm. on there, and then you have like 30 minutes, and you get three tries, and you're <laughs> on there. So I mean, um, I, I don't really personally look into it. That's just me. That's not a that's not um, uh a demeaning of it. I mean, it's, it's pretty honorable to put it on up on there and, and to have it. But I think, especially in like my position, there's a, um, a, a lot more on the field than just um, scoring a couple tries and stuff. Right. So, um, but yeah, no, everybody knows the myths and tricks of the hooker. Position. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> having a guy like Paul, like Paula Balacana on that, like weekly, um, <laughs> so deserving of it. Right. Cause he's just scoring tries. That's what he does. He's a machine. Uh, even like Vion Conradi, any, 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 um time he's on that it's like yeah because he had a massive game probably made 40 tackles right so uh, <laughs> but i think the front row might just look past it a bit uh <laughs> you gotta try and you're you're a contender so it's it's the front row mentality but hey i do know a thing that does mean a whole lot to you and it is coming home with that mlr shield man so let, let's break it down a little bit i mean yeah. m- crazy crazy game uh I, I, we were talking about it uh over the past couple of weeks um just Obviously, matchup of the season, 25-24, came down to the wire. Yeah. Um, obviously, LaRue Milan scoring that one late in the match to uh, to kind of seal the deal there for you guys. But it was definitely a close one. Um, t- take us through the match, man, and, and how it felt, what what it was like, um, you know, competing at that stage and, and just kind of the, the developments of ultimately ending up getting on the right end of things and coming home away with that shield. Yeah, quite high stakes. Um well, it's great. We, we came out of, for warm up and like Shaq, DJ Diesel was DJ. It was like <laughs> DJ Diesel. It was, it might have been a, like, honestly, it was crazy. It was so loud. Uh, it was louder than during the game. Like it was a festival. Mm. Uh, so it was kind of, it was, yeah, it was just tough kind of to get the, get our ropes around that. Um, but no, the game was just a little bit of back and forth. Eh? Like I think we, we got um, a good, a good, uh, Good head play there by uh, Mitchie Jacobson scoring that try off um, off like maybe a miscue by them. And then um, probably a little bit of a misread um, by myself on on Nanu coming in for a double. And and they found Nate Osberger through the middle, uh, through um, probably my right side. So I just, I mean, obviously you got to give a player like Nanu the respect <laughs> um, to go in for a double. But yeah, like it was just high stakes, I think. Um and I think I was pretty proud of the way our backs played, not like afraid to make a mistake, just like played how they usually do. Um, man, they're so good. Everyone, like every back in that game is excellent. Yeah. Uh, obviously I, I, I love our boys and, but like you look at every back in that game and like, it is, there's just so much talent. Um, so yeah, no, it was, it was an amazing game to be a part of. It was crazy. It was a little stressful coming down to that last scrum, especially with like, 78 40 you probably couldn't have just kicked it out at the end there you had to play a bit and then a couple scrums go down and so yeah it was stressful (laughs) i mean you bring up the quality of the two sides and i mean i I have to ask like did it feel like almost close to the to the to the level of an international match that you'd play with ken because you look at the talent on the sides right you're seeing guys like ma nani you're seeing guys like miss jakes and these guys who have you know, have played at some of the highest levels. I mean, especially Nanu, obviously, but some of these guys have played at the highest levels and so many international players on both sides. Did it feel like the level of an international game or an international test? Yeah, like, I think even with the fan, the fans as well, it was quite amazing. Um, they were just loud. Like, they were loud. There was support. Like, there would be, like, a Let's Go Free Jacks followed by, like, a Legion, like, in between each other. Uh-huh. Um, and then, like, yeah, you got – fellows like Isaac Ross coming on the bench yeah. like right like it's so it was it was pretty cool um and yeah it was comp- it was very competitive um no yeah it was I still haven't co- quite acknowledged it yet I like um if I'm being honest I haven't really watched yeah Phil, you don't really watch a film film review yeah. the last game right? <laughs> too, so, too busy <laughs> watching the bottom yeah, of the too, bottle go too, too busy celebrating man I, I don't say too many beers off the shield you. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't blame you one bit. But I mean, in terms of where that atmosphere ranks and all the big time matches that you've played, like where where does that land for you in terms of just the environment and and that that stage? Yeah, I think if I'm being honest, I probably it was it would be at up international caliber for sure, especially in like a stadium. 
if I'm being honest, I probably personally felt like a little comfortable out there because I think for an international game, you might get quite hyped up and, and nervous and stuff. Um, so I felt like quite comfortable, especially having played a lot of the played those boys in the season. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, I think being in that game, it, it shows you how fun like international rugby is once you're at a comfort stage. Like, I think I'm, I'm probably starting to get there in my career in terms of um, like being comfortable out there, obviously, like just m- less so like being afraid of making mistakes, kind of just being yourself. So, yeah, no, it would. Um, I can see why like someone like Nadu will stay around for a hundred plus tests, right? Like, cause it is <laughs> so, it is so fun. Um, especially in that environment, especially like you're comfortable, but also have a little bit of the nerves. So I think that was actually probably the perfect balance of like atmosphere, nerves, and like comfortability, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Hey, when Q, when you played in Japan and, and, you know, Japan is those, that, that fan base is crazy for rugby. And, you know, when you played there, it's kind of hard to find anything that really matches up to that, you know? Oh yeah. Like, yeah, I I probably was more of a spectator on the field (laughs) when I look at it like that. (laughs) like that would have been my, I think my third cap play in the all blacks, like was crazy. Right. So I think that comfortability will come, but um, no, nah, it was a, it was an amazing, the MLR did an amazing job that weekend. It was, it was awesome. Yeah. I think it was the, uh, what we said a couple of shows back, I think it was the highest attended final game in the history of the MLR up to this point. So yeah. it's good to see that it's obviously growing a whole bunch. Um, let's talk a little bit about build up to, to that final. I mean, I feel like a lot of people, a lot of people were hopping on the San Diego Legion train and I, and I'll tell you, Matt and I are both on record mm, on this show this uh, in the build up in the build up of the, of the final that we thought that the San Diego Legion were going to come away with the, the MLR shield. Wow. Um, obviously that didn't, that didn't come away. <laughs> with it. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no kidding. Um, but honest. I mean, th- th- this team, I mean, you watch the San Diego Legion throughout the season and just how electric, how fast, how dynamic that they played through and just the high powered ceiling that they can reach. For the New England Free it was all about consistency. And, and we talked about in hindsight, you know, it maybe was that consistency and that that just that hot play that you guys kind of peaked at that right time for you guys that just all came together for you guys. But in terms of the buildup of preparing for a team like that, um, what was kind of the mindset to take on a team that, like you said, has the talented backs that they have, have some pretty marquee names? Um, what, what was kind of the, the mindset and, and the theme and the goals here heading into this final match to come away with the victory? Yeah, yeah. Um... Now that the game's over and, and whatnot, but I, our, our two main, we want to just front up in the forwards. Um, I mean, I think that's pretty given for any game, but obviously it was, it was a big focus that um, that day. Uh, just big runners, right? Like just big boys, see if we can get them on the ground, keep them on the ground. Um, and then uh, keep watching them attack on the, on the outsides. So obviously like, our wingers and and centers credit to them, even potty, like just coming up like really, really hard. Um, and you see, you saw a couple forces like that, probably maybe even on that first try, right? Like, um, the boys just coming up hard and whether guys are, um, you know, guys notice that right. Hard, hard, hard D lines. And so that was, those are pretty much the big two that we focused on. Um, yeah, those are probably the big two we focused on again. We'd already played them. We didn't even look at that film, I think, probably because we were a different, a bit of a different team. Um, but then a lot of it was just uh, just backing ourselves, being us, not playing a, a different game based on the um, occasion and whatnot. Because um, we knew it would come. And to be fair, we have quite a strong uh, bench. Like that probably complimented us some of the best this season where the bench comes on and it's you're like, what's going like, it's a different game, right? We started the game again. Like, so um, we're complimented well by the bench. Um, no, no matter who the 23 are, it's like you're throwing, right? Yeah. Like um, a guy like walks, right? Like walk, a, like, you know what I mean? You throw him in and it's just a different 10, like 10 if potty comes out and it's like, holy, what's going on? Same with Reese McDonald. He goes to 10. It's like, like what's going on? You know what I mean? There's no drop off. Um, no. So, yeah. Was there uh, coming over from Toronto, like when you came to New England, did you feel that uh, I guess that pressure to perform? Like, was there that uh, idea in the locker room that, you know, it's make or break. We're going to win it all this year. Yeah, there was probably a significant amount of pressure. Um, And I think it's, there's a good like competitive pressure too within the team. Um, There's no, like, there's no idiots where there's no egos, I would say like, so, but 
you know, if someone has a good training one day and then your position, right, you're kind of not watching your back, but you're like, Oh, I need to perform. I need to like yeah. check up and stuff. Um, but yeah, it was quite competitive where we have like our, our like training squad. Then we have our like 23 that kind of mimic the other team. And like probably the best games we play was when uh, we call them like the red coats, when the red coats like are sick and like beat us, like, you obviously don't get conversions, but they'll beat us like four one, and like every usually the usually the uh, fellows that are injured on the sideline are cheering for for the coats and stuff. Yeah. So <laughs> usually the best games we have are when the coats like just outperform the starting fifteen, and um, there's a good energy about that, uh, especially yeah, because the coats obviously want to win. You want to be in the starters, so yep. Um, no, there's a good competitive nature, but again, there's no there's no like egos and stuff. Um, you just want to compete. You just want to play. So. So did the red coats whoop you before this final match or what? Um, to be fair, that was probably our, our best week of training. I'd say um, in terms of like the red coats were, were phenomenal and um, probably maybe let up, let a little bit, let a bit, a little bit up on us um, <laughs> just so we could get the, get the, the food confidence. going. But um, oh, it's awesome when you're like on the red coats and like you're flying, like, let her be a try that's like you know someone's got 40 meters out no one in front of them and like everybody on the team's just like sprint <laughs> like they'll get in for the whole team gets in for a celly when the red coats score so i remember just beelining from wherever you are just like as fast as you can. it's so fun um but no that's i mean it takes the champ the this this past weekend was 40 of us right like it's yeah it's not 23 like it's the whole crew um so yeah it's it's again sorry to long-winded question no 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 that's that's the point of it very competitive nature extremely competitive nature but everyone no egos what's the what's the lead up to the week like like are you tackling up until the game do you kind of take a little bit off do you kind of walk through some stuff like uh, take us kind of through your your week like your your preparation yeah so um we probably only hit on tuesdays and it'll that'll end training and it's probably a four to five minute block so yeah, no, it's it's quite um not it's not it's not re- not that it's relaxed, but in terms of contact, the contact's yep. probably down. But man, our SNC's on it. Like um you guys have probably seen just like some of the GPSs and stuff, like so they have a they'll have like a live beacon that's like quite that's tracking quite um significantly while while we're all running and stuff. And like guys like um Ben Lesage numbers are just like like unseen before like he would compete with the best in the world in terms of like metrics um like just 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 how much he runs and and so um but yeah then your 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 thursdays would be just like a a nice a nice gym lift and uh um, a quick session and then a friday captain's run travel we traveled on the friday uh to chicago um yeah so that it was good and then it kind of leads into the game and then sunday's off which is which is nice yeah. Well, well, let me tell you, you guys did everything right, uh, obviously, to come with the Virginia, and, you, and yeah. you ended up shutting shutting me and Matt up. That's for sure. Yeah, I, think, well, I think I think we know hey, next nothing time better to, than that, eh? <laughs> yeah, we I think we know better next time to to bet against the Andrew Quattro, <laughs> the Major League Rugby champion Andrew Quattro. Now, so we'll we'll definitely keep that in mind into into next season. But just before we kind of shift on over to kind of a, a more conversation of the season and what it was like for you, the the journey to get to that top spot. Um, I, I gotta ask, it, it must feel good to be a champion, though, eh? It must feel it must feel damn good to have that on your belt now. I mean, yeah, I've like, been in the league that long. I know, I th- and I think even like it's like everyone's been saying it. Oh, like it still hasn't hit us because it's, it's like I think um, we're treating it like we want to get you. Know, like obviously we want a game, right? And like every time you win, you kind of celebrate after. Sure. Um, the celebration has been a little longer this time, but yeah. um, <laughs> hangovers lasted a little longer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, nah, but I, 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 to be fair, it honestly hasn't like quite kicked in yet. So it'll be quite interesting. Um, like when it's like, man, like let's go, like maybe it could even be first day of next season. Like, all right. Yeah. Um, but nah, the city. So like we play in Quincy, which is just South of Boston, probably about 10 minutes South of Boston. Um, we had our parade Saturday. It was sick. There was probably about a thousand people out. Uh, we came to the, oh, yeah. into the stadium I mean, I can't imagine a place where it would be like we had one of the um, we had kind of like a, a a party bus with no windows that comes down like, you see <laughs> in like uh, San, San Francisco or like Nashville, like a trolley car. Yeah. Yeah. 
and we had like Quincy squat SWAT, Quincy um cops on like bicycles and motorcycles. Um Quincy <laughs> you got the VIP treatment. Yeah, yeah no doubt. No. Like it was just it was just awesome. And I think that like that really reflects on how much it means to Quincy itself. I would have never expected that, right? Yeah. Um, and then you see about a thousand fans. People have come from New Hampshire, which is about an hour drive. And yeah, it it, it would that was amazing. I think that's that was probably where it was like, wow, we won, right? Because um, yeah, it was just it was just cool. I wouldn't have expected that to happen anywhere else in the league. Um, maybe maybe it did, but um, I was very that was pretty memorable for me. It's probably one of the best days of my life, honestly. And and, and uh, I mean, over under. How many beers did you crush uh, during, <laughs> after, and before the parade? I'm going to put the over under at 24. During, over, during, after, none before. During and after, we, um, well, I guess it was on Facebook. We had a party <laughs> bus that, the, that, that one of the boys that runs like a Quincy, pay, like a Quincy, like Facebook page put together for us. And Damn. like it was crazy. And a lot of the boys had gone home to NPC, right? So there was only about eight of us. Yeah. Um, but so then we were just with about 10, 10 other lads and we were on this party bus and it was just <laughs> electric. <laughs> we would show up with the shield to like, a, he had a, he had called like about a couple, they put it on, yeah, it was crazy. We they called about eight bars that we would go to. We'd stop, roll up for an hour. <laughs> It was amazing. <laughs> bottle service. Bottle yeah. service. Um, well, I guess that's also a big discussion on this show is the fact of how we feel about this MLR shield. And obviously a classic thing in rugby is obviously drinking out of the cup. But clearly, Major League Rugby doesn't have a cup. So you see the hilarious pictures of people funneling beers off yeah. of the shield. How many times are you funneling beers off of that shield and, and, and drinking from that dirty, that dirty piece of hardware? Well, I love that. I think it's like that's important. <laughs> that's part of it. Like you just got to make what sure. you got. Yeah, I back the shield. I'll say it. I back the shield. You know, um, just make of what you got. Like, but yeah, I I was probably a magnet on that mich- on that shield <laughs> in terms of like pouring. Um, I don't know. It's just that's part of the celebration, right? Everyone, oh, for sure. A lot of people had the cup going, like the Eastern Conference Champs Cup. Um, it just ain't the uh, same. The beer don't taste the same. Yeah, the, in the right. cup. It's way better oh, yeah. off the shield. It was just like. <laughs> Like I was just saying, who wants to play Plinko? Because like it could go anywhere. <laughs> like it, re- like because it just it catches a number and yeah. it's just like right, just yeah. a letter and it's just yeah. Yeah, that's funny. Well, uh, yeah, no. Again, we're we're super pumped for you, man. That that you're able to uh, to get on the winning side of it. It's it's super fun stuff. And again, we we said it before. It was it was a blast watching the New England Free Jacks this season. So, I mean, let, let's talk a little bit about that crazy season that you guys had. Obviously, like you mentioned earlier, um, a little bit of a um, I don't know if you want to call it a rocky start, but definitely not the same success that you saw towards the end of the season. I mean, once week seven hit. I mean, a 10 game winning streak, you guys were dominant at home. Yeah. Um, so there's a couple of things to break down from there, but once, once you guys were rolling, like when did it hit you guys on that winning streak where you're like, you know what, we're the real deal here. Like we're, we're unstoppable when we are playing our game. Um, how did it feel to be on that win streak? What was kind of the mindset? How did you guys keep that going? Cause it's hard, man. I mean, people were on notice. Yeah, I think, um, we, pro- we probably, everybody probably knew we were hot on the team um and but like didn't make much of it uh probably just was like yeah we're hot like (laughs) like respectfully it was like yeah we we see it in training like we see it in games but i don't think there was a cockiness of it it was never like we i would say we respected our um opponents well like we detailed them like hey like these guys are good at this we see um like threats in this like a swat we see threats in this we see weakness in this we see strength right so um, I just think uh, the way we approach weeks um, through coaches and obviously with players, like very positive mentality, um, that's probably what made us very confident, I think, because we would also look at ourselves and be like, hey, like, look what we've done here, guys. Like, excellent. Like, great job. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't say there was a lot of like, oh, like, hey, like, um, yeah, like there would be there would not that you were alluding to cockiness there and there was never, but I think we I think we knew it was going well and it was cruising. Um, but we we definitely to every week we took like, hey, like we not that we need to be careful, but like let's be on watch for if we shut this part of the uh team down, like we we should be able to ha- like handle it. 
but it was never there was never a circumstance where we were like oh um you know like here we go like you know what I, you know what i'm saying right right yeah. right well, well what how is that different from kind of like this the start of the season like ryan brought up it was kind of a it was a rocky start we we saw a, a new england free jack team that kind of looked like it it was a lot different than what we expect from the past like the past few years from the squad um and it just seemed like you know the eastern conference was anyone's game when it's you it was usually just free jacks or uh the now iron workers what was how how different was it to start the season when you guys were kind of i think around 500 under 500 at some points what was that like what was the environment like that compared to the end yeah i don't think the environment changed um i just think it was just getting used to each other really uh i mean you turned into team canada so yeah yeah right like there, was, <laughs> there was like a decent amount of turnover and even in the front row right there was what millsy eagle um keith well yeah sorry i'm just thinking of guys that were here last year like millsy eagle and fozzy and tavita right so we had we almost had a, a half new guys in a front row so i think it was just about you know just getting used to each other really um I think all this, like the socials we had in terms of like do just doing stuff together. Um, people have seen our like vaults that we do like on the proven show, which is amazing. Like, um, so the, yeah, like, right. You look at the, the Dallas game, like that was a tough one. Um, tough, tough weather too. Uh, especially followed by that loss in, in Utah. Um, so yeah, it was just, um, not that there was struggle, but, uh, yeah, you guys just was, you guys just had to hit the certain yeah, level exactly. the number of pints you had together threshold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, before you can finally you come together. And, and I and I think I and I think if I'm being honest, um, it was just like we're a team that if it's if it's great weather, like the backs like have at it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like have at it. Um, so yeah, no, it was uh, it was a uh, it was a little bit of a battle. Sorry, I I misspoke. The Dallas game, yeah, leading into then a loss to Utah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So yeah, they, but uh, hey, go to round. Got it done. Go to week, go to week twenty two. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, that's right. Like, so, but yeah, up. everyone. I think I get... we were lucky to probably have our kinks at the start of the year. Um, but yeah, I think it's just 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 getting uh getting amongst each other and and um, yeah, just 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 meshing really. Um, and... when you lose, like when you lose, uh, I think Larue was training and then Larue goes down. Like we had some injuries too, right? Like Larry too early, then then Lars goes down. So um, there was just some meshing that um, just needed to happen. And again, it came into fruition, and and the rest is history. Now, a big part of that success, and I think this might have helped you guys a lot, is just how dominant you guys are are at home. I mean, what what's it like, like playing at Veterans Memorial Stadium in Quincy? Like, I mean, there's something about that place where you guys are just clicking. I mean, all season long, uh, you guys never lost at home. It was it was incredible, man. You guys protected uh, the home territory, and and I mean, uh, that's not an easy thing to do. Um, but there seems to be something about that place that that just keeps you guys clicking. Yeah, it's hectic. Like honestly, we we enter. I think from where the film sees it, we enter um, from the back side of the street. So we kind of enter elevated and they just get things going early. Like people <laughs> down here, like, well, Quincy, right? A thousand people showed up to a parade, like a parade. And like, they just tailgate. Like, it's just <laughs> crazy. It's the um, Boston sports, man. They'll pick up anything, anything that has a, uh, uh, has an, uh, uh, any sports kind of competitiveness involved. I guess it's just a Boston thing to do to enjoy it. Like when we're arriving at the stadium, there's probably 1500 people already there. Like just oh, whether they're in the stadium or whether they're around, like it's, it's crazy. This like, there's just, there's like super fans people. It would just be like a sevens event, but like there's yeah. a free drink for it mm -hmm. and like a tailgate, <laughs> like it's crazy. Um, they have like our, our, our um, management staff does an amazing job in our, in our front office, like having like a festival, right? Like they'll have like a, a band or um, old crow medicine show did that. Like they played after um, they do what they do wagon wheel, the originators of wagon wheel. And um, yeah, it's just, it's amazing um, what the front office does, even on a rainy day. Like, like there's people there, like, it's crazy. Um it's just such a good atmosphere and then everyone when we were warming up usually in the north end i believe and like there's people just huddled around yelling and it's just brewing and it seems like quite significant we're like 
it, the our side of the field is just gaining crowds and then people will go to the seats. So it's like, I remember even being last year when I was playing with Toronto there, you're quite like isolated in that end zone, right? You're not getting any of the buzz. Yeah. The sounds over there and the scoreboards there, but in the North end, it's just like buzzing, right? That's where, that's where the entrance is. Um, it's a, it's just an amazing day. Um, a lot of like first time rugby goers, like, they're like, Oh yeah, it's my first game. We'll be back hundred percent. Um, and that's what the, the people in Quincy buy. And we do, we, <laughs> we like have YMCA memberships. Eh? So we'll go to the sauna, like boys are like, in the sauna <laughs> and we'll just chat. Like the amount of people that have been like, yep, yeah, we, you know, we saw the boys in the sauna and that, it's just hilarious. Like <laughs> no that was like a jo- that we had a joke of the year See, that we got to get it, the shield in the sauna. Cause the amount it's, of people. <laughs> it's that type of connection with the fans that uh, that's what it takes to win a championship. Well, seriously, yeah. right? Like the, and like people are so friendly down there and like, Oh, I remember your friends from New Zealand and stuff like that. Right. Like, and everybody on the team's friendly, like they'll chat with anyone, you know, next thing you know, you're, passed out in the sauna you've been in there for 60 minutes chatting with someone <laughs> um but no it's it's i yeah the place is amazing what the front office does is amazing but like the the people are made the people make it the fans are made like some of the best in the league if not the i'm saying the best i didn't want to offend anyone but i'll say the best um <laughs> They're amazing. Yeah, I mean, anybody anybody that's willing to get in a sauna with a bunch of big lines, <laughs> yeah, yeah no gotta doubt. be pretty good no doubt yeah no oh. but it's yeah everyone's awesome now, you know, talking about all your wins at home, what kind of win feels better for you? Uh, uh, you know, an eight nothing win over, uh, I think you had against New York or like a 50 to three win that you had against Nola. Like, cause some guys take away those eight, or nothing. Eight to five. Yeah. Eight like to five too. <laughs> yeah. If I, yeah. If I'm, yeah. If I'm, if I'm being honest, you probably like learn more from those eight, nothing games. Cause there's probably, I remember that day with that day was quite wet. Um, but if so if you're talking fan wise the 50 like they do this thing huzzah every time we score a try so you score one try it's one huzzah you score two tries it's two so i think that day against Jeez. nola it was up to about like seven <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah so they're like yelling oh huzzah, huzzah yeah. like one after another and it's probably it hasn't like we need to infiltrate it to the whole stadium but it's yeah. just it's just the jacks rangers who i'm sure you guys follow on yeah uh, yeah, yeah. One of the boys, Dave, he just goes down and he holds a sign. So he, when he throws it up, everybody does it. So like, they're just screaming huzzah. Like, um, so for, as a fan, it's probably exciting. And like, it's, it, it would not that it reminds, like I'm on the bench. It like, is someone makes a break. It would be like, you know, when you watch super rugby, someone makes a break and like that you can feel the energy just like immediately lift. Yeah. Um, it's like that, but, um, no, the eight, like a gritty game is, you need that, right? That's a good, yeah. like, again, it's our loss against Utah. Like you needed a gritty game. I think you find more, find out more about yourself. Um, But yeah, no, Um, as a fan, I'll sure like, especially <laughs> like the ones that are big scores. Cause the huzzahs are flying, especially if it's a nice oh day, gosh. like beers you know, are flowing. You know how many huzzahs, it, you know how many huzzahs would have been going on if the, if the Toronto game was at home? Yeah. Eight to five match. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. You guys would have been believe... able to kick the ball off. You would have been into like the end of the yeah. game and it'd still be going. Oh, I believe it was goodness. a MLR record 12 try. So yeah, there would have, there MLR been... record you number imagine? of huzzahs. <laughs> there, yeah, no kidding. There, there would have been quite a few. Um, but yeah, no, it's, 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 it's funny that you mentioned that. Cause I think those are, uh, before we kind of move into the, the fantasy rugby side of things here, um, those are the two kind of games that I wanted to kind of touch on. Cause the free Jacks seem to be on both ends of the spectrum. You guys were in an eight, nothing match where it was the lowest scoring match in the history of the MLR. And then you're in this eight to five match in Toronto, um, your homecoming to get, to go back home, play in front yeah, of I'm sure some good, family you? and friends. Um, I didn't want to five, bring that 12, one up, man. I guess no, it's that's, all right. that's, that's why I brought up the NOLA one. Yeah, 12, 12 tries. I mean, you you were incredible, dude. And 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 we talk about, uh, you know, I mentioned fantasy rugby from your standpoint. I mean, uh, it was your, uh, for, for what you know, your best fantasy performance of there the we year. 14.3 fantasy points. You racked up two tries in that one, 30 meters gained. Uh, you had six tackles. Um, so you were making a, a fantasy manager in our league very, very happy with that performance. But we'll start with that one first, um, since you touched on the, the New York one uh, I got a already. screenshot that. I got a screenshot. Oh, well, 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 
get it. We'll get, <laughs> we'll, we'll, get the, we'll get your stats all sent to you, man. Twelve we'll tackles you. and you get seven point nine. Eight tackles and you get two point seven. There's some. Yeah, that's all right. We'll get it's, it. It's not. It's, <laughs> it's not. It's not. Hey, it's not a front a row friendly. Lead. It's not lead. exactly. Right. It's not. It's not a front row friendly. Now I will say, uh, as as uh, Matt and myself being two scrum halves, maybe we've been a little bit biased in terms of the scores lead. But Vandy, the big man here, has always been uh, had an affinity towards uh, some of the big boys. So maybe he'll he'll uh, pledge for you to try to get that point scoring up but uh nonetheless though i mean biggest performance of the season there in that toronto match again that's going to happen with a with an 80 to 5 victory um how did that match feel obviously big time for you because you're coming back home friends and family are there uh take us through that kind of day and how how kind of crazy that was yeah yeah i mean um man we probably had about like 200 fans there um free jacks fans i had a decent amount of family and like uh, hats off to the arrows because they asked if we wanted tickets and stuff so they really they helped us out which was amazing um but yeah quite emotional um quite an emotional week coming back obviously like i I love playing for toronto um but yeah i think we we did want to prove a a point um and like i said like we talked about the two games eight nil terrible like it was a terrible rainy day still found a way to get the dub 80 to 5 it was a beautiful night like gorgeous night sun was setting um yeah just honestly fortunate to be on the back of a mall for a couple of them right that should be like you only get half the try points in fantasy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, you need it. You need every point that you can get. Q. If you're do. complaining about your time points, yeah. you need every single point you can get. I do. Um, <laughs> but no, uh, it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was a really good feeling. Um, it was a pretty good performance, um, by us. Uh, yeah, not much, not much more to say. It was, and and, and nah, I mean, you gotta I got, love a good stop. I, I mean, I, I gotta, I gotta ask too, though, man. It, it must have felt, it felt pretty good to get that leg up there after obviously playing, having played in Toronto, coming yeah. back. Um, it felt good to kind of, kind of make that statement there for you. Yeah, no, some of the other boys too, right? There was probably there was about yeah. five or six of us, and I mean, that was Ben Lesage's actually first game in Toronto. Really? Ever. Wow! And he was the wow. co-captain. Um. So yeah uh it was a lot it was yeah it was an inter- it was an interesting game but no it was it was it was we were i thought we were clinical we were we were very clinical and I mean, like I said, your your fantasy. I'll give you one more look at it here. I've already Q. got a screenshot. Um, it's fine. There you go. So you can you can you can turn that into a poster. But yeah, it was your your fantasy performance of the season. Fourteen point <laughs> three uh, fantasy points there. So again, you you made a fantasy manager that week. Uh, quite happy. Um, so let, let, I mean, let's let's get into it. let's get into a little bit of fantasy numbers, man. You you kind of interested in seeing how you fared against some of the boys across yeah. the league. Uh, it's it, it was definitely an interesting one. Now to give you some context, I think we uh, might have given you your ranking last season and it yeah. might have not been as hot um, no but, i was i remember i think no. i was quite upset but <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. but what was interesting we we've made moves here at the fantasy Rutgers. we've got a little ah. bit you know a little bit more fun we've, we've got a little bit more technological advancement so we have a website now and we also got our hands on a little bit more stats so we're able to include a little bit more forward friendly stats into this which allowed you to get some of those uh those double digit point uh evenings there on the weekend um and it helped you out a little bit so um, i mean i'll i'll give you uh your your uh your fantasy overall ranking out of every single player in the league can i guess first you can guess what do you think you got i gotta go low yeah i don't want to be disappointed how many players are there sorry sorry i mean there's like there's like there's like there's like (laughs) i interrupted the drum roll Ah, it's it's all all good good. good. around 300 i would say all right i would be (laughs) happy if i was above 150 Oh, okay. okay i'll be well, happy i think you're, I think you're gonna, gonna be make a pretty you happy, happy dude man because you are 133rd in the entire league wow. and this is in a fantasy league that is like you said a very yeah. uh scorers a uh, scorers friendly league but man 73.4 fantasy points on the year uh 133rd but i think what is going to matter to you more is where you ranked amongst the other front rowers so out of all the front rowers in the league who do you think you you stacked up against in terms of where you placed in that? So there would have been how many front rowers? Sorry, would there have been like 60, 60? Yeah, probably something like that. There. Yeah. Yeah. 60, 70. I'll be happy if I was wow, if I was top 20, I'd be very happy. 
Whoa. Well, we're just, we're just, we're just yeah, making you a uh, very, very happy you got guy. Low because, uh, for yeah, yourself. You, you gotta, you gotta be a little up. bit more. I think we set this up though, because last season we set it so low. Yeah, you guys set. Yeah, yeah. it was like <laughs> now it's like a with a little bit of first caution. in the league last year. <laughs> yeah. um, well, this year, Hugh, you were the twelfth best wow. front rower in the league. So you you made some moves, man. You were very, very good this year, man. You Amazing. Look good. at this. Could you go to oh you got front rowers well. Oh so here we'll get front rowers up for you. Um twelfth in the league. Uh let me pull this up. So Where there you are. There, there's your there's your front yeah, rowers. Malolo was good. Malolo was oh Malolo was fantastic. Yeah. He was the number one. Yeah Millsy um, like yeah that's what like there's the weapon. Yeah. There's yeah, so Mel Sanarivi, your teammate, uh, ranking that fifth spot. Like you mentioned, Sam Malolo at that top one with 122.7. But hey, 12, top 15, that's not too bad, Q. So that, yeah, that's, I'm just trying to think. We're Keep Mil scrolling Mil down, show them all the names. Yeah. <laughs> we're Millsy and I, the top, we were both hookers. We would have been the top, like, hooker mates. Because Geiger, yeah. yeah, he's a hooker, yeah. but he played half the year at tight head. Yeah. 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 Wow, that, I, I like so. what you guys I think have done. Right this there. is very impressive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they, 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 well, we appreciate it, man. So yeah, 12, 12, 12 in uh, in the league in front rowers. Um, I was gonna, I was, I guess I gave it, I gave it away for you. Um, seeing that Sam Malolo is your top. If, if you had to guess, you probably would have guessed Sam Malolo. I probably would have gave well, I guess... him. I'm surprised. Where's Dean? Because Dean, I would have gone Dean significantly higher, but I know he was. Um, There's away a little bit for... injury stuff. Yeah, he was away for family a bit. stuff. Yeah. Um, stuff. but yeah, I would have had the butch up there. Um, I actually would have had Millsy up there. I probably would have Mill. I was gonna say Millsy top five, honestly. Yeah, well, so because it is a go by I mean, meters made, eh? So there's yeah, so we track, we track meters gained, meters gained, tackles. So if you want to have a look at Mills's number, I mean, he he had an 18, he beat you on his best fantasy performance. He got the 18.2 mark, that two try, 65 meter gain, uh, nine tackle performance yeah. in round 15. Uh, he he really got up there, so um, that's yeah, awesome. I, Top five just, there for, for, for your teammate, man. Um, oh. Now, now if you had to guess who the best New England free jack was, back or forward, uh, uh, on the season, who who would you guess here? And, and choose wisely here because uh, – well, I guess there's three names that come into mind. Okay. Start oh, with the three. There could be four, man. There could be four. <laughs> start start be, with you the four. Watch him get him in a row. Boom, 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 boom. Right. Start with the four. Am I right with four? Order the four. Am I right with four, four guys? Well, who is the number one guy out of all of them? Like uh, the it, best free job player. Honestly, okay. I, I do need – I just – because I don't know, right? I don't know. Um, How much is a try and how many points do you get per meter? Do you get okay, five so per try? You get five points per try. And 0.1 for every meter gained, and it is 0.3 for a tackle. Okay, can I can I just put the four names out there? Okay, so yeah. this is this is who you think is oh, the best, I'm just the best fantasy player on the free. I'll lose season. it if he nails this. I won't because Larue missed a lot, but when he just makes so many meters, and 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 Vandy Vandy had him on his yeah. fantasy squad this year, and when Larue Milan was playing, he, he, was he would very, have been probably the best points per game. One of the best oh, for yeah, there. Was awesome. up there for Very sure. consistent. All right, I'm gonna go Shirley, Vion, Potty, and Paula. Those <laughs> oh my! Top, those are the top three. Okay. Oh my! Wow. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get into it. So the top player on the New England Free Jacks was Vion Conradi. Yeah. With uh, with 193.8 fantasy points, right that behind him. It. Paula Bellicana with 198.3 right behind. And where was Potty? Uh, just that, just down there. Eh? Just down there with 168.6. Um, so yeah, you're you're right on the money there. And and we'll look at. I mean, VN's numbers, Conradi's numbers were Savage. insane. Oh my! Oh, I mean, you look oh at his numbers gosh. here. Uh, compared to to the you have the screenshot that you took of your numbers. Yeah, I don't want to have a look it. at what he. You have a look at what <laughs> he's doing here. Um, uh, yeah, we got up those tackles. Pretty impressive by by what your 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 teammate was doing there. I mean, he's you look at that he's string. He's such an amazing player. You look at that string of 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 tackles gained. I mean, throughout the season, but look at between yeah. round nine and round six. Look at the string of eighty minutes played. That's what yeah. I'm concerned. Oh, unreal, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. Unreal. Yeah. yeah. No kidding. No kidding. So um, so who uh, would have been the fourth? Because I didn't see him on there. I'm gonna guess. Let's see. Um, was like with Johnny. Uh, no, Johnny Poland doesn't run with the ball as much too much. You're hitting one of your centers, Wayne Vanderbank. Yeah, Wayne <laughs> Vanderbank. Now it is a pretty far drop off from Patros, but yeah, Wayne yeah. Vanderbank is your your fourth guy there. 
So, um, yeah, if we, if we pull up your free jobs, guys, these are the numbers. These are the numbers of your, your team. Wow, this is man. sweet. So you got, you got Vian Conradi, 193.8, Paula Bellicana, 193.3, Patros, 168.6. Um, yeah. And I mean, I'll pull up LaRue Milan's numbers. I mean, when he was playing, like, look at how many games he would, he's the yeah. best point. I want you to find out if you don't mind, I don't mean to be bossy. If he was the best, <laughs> if he was the best hey, point. We, we, we don't let players tell us what we do on this yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. We have yeah. you on. It's a pleasure. No, yeah, no, we run this show. We'll, okay. we'll, we'll get we'll get the uh, we'll get the math going. We'll try to figure if out. You what can is figure out because he would have been the best points per player in the le- points per game in the league. I think. Yeah, yeah. He was on um, one. Now I don't know if you saw it there on the total ranking. If you had to guess, out of all the players in the league, who do you think was the best fantasy performer on any team? Just as a oh, whole, I didn't overall. see it. I'm being honest. It would have to be a winger with meteors gained and tries. Like, would Nate Osberger be up there? Oh, you are <laughs> close, man. You want to give close. one more crack? Um, yeah. Uh, the winger for Utah. Oh, um, it's not a. It's not Aoki. No, the man. No, no, no. I no. I can't remember. It's not Cruz, eh, Mika? Joe big, Mono. Big Joe the Mono. Yeah. Joe yeah. Mono. Two hundred. And 46.7 wow. fantasy points. Uh, Nate Oxberg was second there. He uh, was first for a while. But, man, yeah, Joe Mano was. was killing it. I mean, you and look Fuji, at who Fuji's look, the, the, towards too. the tail end of the season. I mean, he he had more games where he scored a try than he didn't score a try. Literally. It, it was incredible. He had the hat trip performance at round six. Um, With 196 yeah. meters, man. That was yeah. a game. Yeah, just crazy. And I will say, Vandy's our in-house Utah fan. So, one, <laughs> he was very happy when he got the victory over you guys um, early on in that, I believe, Ooh, that round six I hate six to admit matchup. it, but yeah. Oh, that's uh, fair. That's, that's fair. facts, uh, But, yeah, man, Joe Mono was incredible. And then, obviously, Nate Oxberger, who you played against and who also scored a try in that in that final, um, was was up there. Poe had a good year, eh? Co had a pretty oh, yeah. damn good year, man. He he was good too. Um, we we're gonna hopefully have him on uh, on the show sometime soon to to chat with him. But yeah, he had a he had a pretty solid season too. Um, I'll, I'll give you a look at his numbers as as being one of his boys. But man, he had some games where he went off. Yeah, he sure. was nice to have. Uh, but uh, th- this is the luxury though <laughs> of being uh, being a, a a back three player in the world of fantasy rugby, man. You you well, front rowers still don't get your justice I mean, yet. Uh, you just all... put up some hundred meter game. Yeah, games like I'm not. Games, yeah, you know yeah. that's easy. That's easy for you, right? Eh? You get a you, you get a pull... point per carry. No, no, no. Sorry, yeah. we were not dishing out gimme points here on, on the yeah. fantasy record yeah. show. All right, you, you got to earn it. So, Q, if you buy you want, back, eh? Q, Q, if, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Q, if you if you want some more points here, you're gonna have to decide to hold on the ball a little bit more there, or, or just go to the wing, or get yeah, get, get 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 find yourself on the wing a little bit more often. But uh, yeah, man, no, we again, we had a lot of fun, um, kind of tracking all this and and watching you, and and I'm sure you're happy to hear that you moved up from there we that go. 400 ranking last year yeah. to at least a top 150 like you said and hey top 12 here as a front rower in the league which is pretty cool stuff and i will say we had a little bit of a of a playoff challenge um towards the tail end of the season where uh we even people outside of our league were able to kind of create this like five uh, player roster based on a 15 dollars salary um and i will say your boy here matt ye was the only one to to pick you in your lineup all right and and you came picking me what was my dollar value $4 Four dollars oh, out of five. Four dollars. You were too high. high. That's too high. No. What do you mean? You were high. That's what I was saying. Man. I would have bought you, but buddy, everybody, bucks, everybody would have picked you if you were lower. Top twelve front rower, man. Wow. You gotta pay. You gotta pay the premium for that, man. I'm you gotta honored. pay the Thank premium. You, that's too there high. You four, four bucks for you, but yeah, you you racked it up in that. Obviously, in that that first uh, that first match that you had against Old Glory DC, uh, eleven point nine points in that one. You were the the oh, benefactor yeah, of obviously yeah. that uh, that try that you scored there. Uh, but forty three meters gained, seven tackles. That, that's pretty that's solid bad. numbers. Um, and How much then, is a tackle? Uh, sorry, two point three. Point three. Yeah. You think we should bring that boost that up a little bit? Oh no, sorry. I I I should have known because I'm no no. Uh, point three. No, that's probably accurate, eh? Pretty good. Like a so you're saying carry. so as a front rower, as a front rower, you're thinking that the biggest thing that we need to add to help you guys out is a, a point per carry. Is that, is that what you're saying? Uh, but we we position limit it. <laughs> I'm just trying to think like maybe like. Just say, how can you get pen, the more points? Everybody in the front row gets a point. Okay, that's spoken. Ooh, I don't know. Like you like, said, spoken like I'm a true back. Spoken like a true forward, right there. Let me tell you, right? Like because 
Next thing you know, you're giving a route. Come Beyond, on. Vion we... Conradi gets another 25 points. Yeah, yeah no exactly. Kidding. exactly. That's the problem. <laughs> we, both, we both know, Q, the refs just close their eyes and pick yeah. a side when it comes to those <laughs> scrum penalties, all right? No, this so. is cool. This is cool. This is yeah. this is super cool what you guys have done. Yeah. No, no, it's, it's been a lot of fun. It. Um, I will say, and, I'll, and, we'll, and we'll kind of wrap it up on this note. Um, you're Not that it was a bad performance, and I'm sure you would trade in that MLR shield, or you'd keep that MLR shield over trading in a better, better fantasy performance, but you only got 4.6 fantasy points in that final, and you did make Matt lose the fantasy playoff challenge. You ended up finishing. I didn't want to say it. Uh, I didn't want to say it. But uh, you just, you know. You know, the just, winner had Malolo, so. It's just not, not good enough. The man. winner hey, had Malolo, Q. You got to play a piece. You got to play a piece <laughs> to the puzzle. <laughs> Spoken like a true champ right yeah, there. You got to play a there piece. You go. That's why $4 uh, hey. is too high. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if you played worse during the season, you'd We're going to end the interview know? on a slap to the face, boys? Come uh, on. Right. No, I, like, no, no, no. Hey. To be fair, that final game, like, I probably – that's what I mean. Like, if I had carries, I would have felt better. But I think I had two carries, and they were, like, just setting up box kicks where you're going to go negative. Yeah. Um. Yeah, probably had like three, four times. I don't even, you know what I mean? I don't even know. Like, yeah. So, no, well, no, you did, you did okay, matter. man. You had you got 20, that shield. 29 meters gained and nine tackles in that one. You're underplaying. Oh, yourself. See, like, that's what I mean. I got four fantasy <laughs> points and I had 24, I had nine tackles. <laughs> like, you gotta, you gotta hit those double digits, man. You gotta hit those double that's digits. That's my new thing, closing the computer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, it's, oh, it's great. But God. Matt, you, you got one last it, question here to wrap yeah, it up. And, and I mean, just to, to close it out, Q, what, what, you know, what's coming next? Uh, you told us before you're, you're heading to Fiji. Um, I know you, the, the Canada boys, you guys are playing Tonga and, and you'll try to not get killed by Ben Famuina. Yeah. Um, but, you know, what's next? Tonga, what's coming up in the off season? What's coming up next year? Uh, what's the plans for Big Q? Yeah. Um, no, we're going to go to Tonga, which will be awesome. And then um, um going to go to New Zealand to train with the MPC squad down there. So that'll be amazing. A good oh, nice. experience for myself. Um, can you say which one? Uh, I pro I no, I don't think I can, but uh, <laughs> don't get yourself. In I'm trouble. just going, I'm pretty much just going to train, just be a, a training body, which will be, which would be odd. Like it's just worth an experience, right? I mean, Unreal. Unfortunately not going to the world cup, right? But um, not that I'm getting old, but being 26, like it's, it'll be good to do something fun. Right. So, yeah, um, I'm super excited for that, and then straight to uh, straight to November internationals after that, and then straight right back in it with the Free Jacks. Which, yeah, it's it, probably my first time I've ever been like a full year of rugby. Like I th- like honestly, the first two weeks off, I guess this past week we have really only had three weeks off this past since this past um, January started. Right, so by the time that ends. But by the time October comes, we'll only had three weeks off. Body will be a little broken. Hopefully not, but <laughs> it sounds it sounds like 26 years young. You're still loving it, man. Yeah. Oh, it's sweet. It's the best. Um, I wouldn't change it for anything in the world. It's amazing. Absolutely. All right. Well, hey, man, again, uh, appreciate you taking the time to hop on this show, dude. We appreciate it. We love catching up with you. Uh, hopefully we can uh, uh, catch up with you again sometime soon, maybe in the off season. And obviously, as we get closer to to the 2024 year, we'll be able to preview an A. Maybe with the amount of convincing that you did to us, maybe you'll crack our, you know, top 10 rankings yeah. heading into next season. <laughs> um, yeah, it'll it'll be it'll be interesting. And again, I know you've been really digging the fantasy stuff. If you do uh, want to check more of those stats out, the fantasy got all that stuff in there got to put the plug in there but uh before you go man have a great off season enjoy the time off uh when you can get it but yeah uh, just keep on killing on the pitch man because uh we're having a lot of fun watching you no fellas appreciate it like i said it's this is sick this looks like a full-time job in itself um, <laughs> sometimes yeah, it feels like yeah. it man sometimes it feels like it man but hey uh we'll, we'll catch up with you soon man really appreciate it of course hey thanks for having me guys um no it's got it's fellas like you that do this type of stuff that um get the league off the ground right so thanks so much for doing that we really appreciate it guys i appreciate it yeah let's ride right. cheers cube let's ride <laughs> uh and and thanks again to andrew quatrin for hopping on the I show always what a good always, dude eh right just interviews well man always a blast to have this guy on um always welcome him back um i love i love i think the most thing out of all of that is that I just love how bought in he is with the whole fantasy MLR thing. Obviously, yeah. that's a little bit biased. He, he, seemed hyped, he was oh, when we were showing him the website, he was he was locked in there. Yep. He was taking screenshots. He wanted a list of his stats. He wanted a list of his teammate stats. Um, no, nah, it's super exciting. Well, you know, it's kind of one thing guys. what he's seen last year, and he sees it on an Excel sheet, and it doesn't sure. look all 
glamour. And now he sees a website, right? That's like well, real and, points and it's tracking hits. And, and I mean, a website and also a over 250 bump up in the fantasy rankings going from 400 last man, year. When he to nailed the top five on his team, I'm like, oh, all right, yeah. homie's got yeah. it. Well, I mean, I was worried. Hey, first, maybe I, we've got it. I, I was worried for, yeah. uh, for, I was worried for a second there because he was like, oh, when I was asking him, or he's like, can I take a guess of where I'm at? He's like, oh, I would be happy if I was, and I was like, dude, if he don't says, say like, seventy five, don't say right, 75. like if he if he overshoots his his prediction. I was thinking the same like, thing. Now, now we're just gonna make him feel like crap. But then as soon as he said, oh, I feel good if I'm 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 top two. Hey, we we set his you know bar what? low. He, he did surprised. a good job last year. We set his bar low. We yeah. looked surprised when we were like, yeah, you're hundred and thirty third or whatever. And then he was like, well, what front row do you think you are? And he's like, I don't know, man. There were like twelve, bro. Yeah, you no, know, he's like, dude, I'd be, I'd be very excited if I was mm -hmm. top twenty, and he did a, a top lot better 15. than top twenty. But uh, yeah, not super excited stuff. I mean, out of all that conversation, um, all, all kidding aside, uh, whether it's fantasy related or or just kind of the the journey that was um, for him this season, what kind of stood out to you uh, in that one? I mean, I feel like there's a whole bunch that we could uh, nitpick and and kind of dissect from all the insight that we got for how how crazy the 2023 year was for Q. Yeah, I mean, I. To me, my favorite part, and I didn't get to say it uh, when we were talking to him, but he, uh, he's talking about the preparation for the game and how he's saying how the backs mm -hmm. were getting up with line speed, making yeah. tackles, and he yeah. goes, even Potty, and it's like, even Potros, eh? the guy who got <laughs> absolutely yeah. teared up on defense basically the whole season and got boshed at least once a game. Yep. Uh, so I kind of giggled and laughed about that just because I wanted to throw out there like, Hey, you have to point him out. You have to point him out. Cause you know, the guy just hates staff. Yeah. Right. You know, well, you know, what's a good thing is that, uh, that doesn't necessarily hurt him that much in the world of fantasy MLR still, uh, yeah. still up there. And you know what? You can tell Q's like, a real big three. team guy though, because you oh, know, yeah. just the way he, uh, you know, it, it wasn't ever just a, a name. It was Potty. It was this. It was the Millsy. It was, you know, yeah. he's very like a uh, nickname guy. You know, yeah. even the way he was just instantly like, hey, man, whatever you got to do to get the dub, not in there to, you know, bully guys out of my way. And then when they're talking about the the, the red coats and how you, everybody's pop when they're scored, yeah. and, you know, yeah. you love to hear that stuff. That's what builds a championship team. Like, yeah. I mean, his reaction too when we told him that uh, Matt and I picked uh, the San Diego Legion. Yeah, and he made he made us eat our words on that one. And I guess, like I mentioned, uh, uh, an episode or two back, that uh, in hindsight, uh, hindsight's always twenty twenty. Uh, it's always I, greener, I wish, baby. I, w I know. I wish I could take that uh, that pick back, but nonetheless, gonna stick with it. And Nate, I guess he. I don't know if it was already confirmed, but I guess he confirmed he's coming back to the Free Jack next year. Yeah, uh, yeah, I guess so. So I mean, where where does that excite you in terms? Of, I know we talked about this kind of briefly last episode where you would take some of these top front rowers and i'm not going to say and obviously we're saying this with now q off the air and you'll probably hear this but uh um obviously you're not you know he and he understood when we mentioned uh off the air that he got taken in that sixth round that you know front rowers go a little bit later just the way yeah. that our our points uh uh work out but i mean um Q will probably get taken around that same same yeah. spot kind of yeah. this year. Yeah. And he, I, I can assure you that he won't be a guy, like we mentioned uh, off air to him as well, and his reaction kind of being like, oh, who's the guy that dropped me this season? I want his name. I want his team that he's yeah. on, or that the team that he's running. Um, and and uh, that's a shout out to you, Hokey, who, who dropped him and, and dropped him uh, in the middle of the season. Um, that you're probably not dropping him this year. I mean, and you're probably taught using the same draft cap around that with the with the season that he had. Yeah, I would say so. Um, I mean, he had an even better season than last year, I'd say. Yep. Maybe a little less try scoring, but I, I think also what will be a really nice decider, and, and maybe it's already set in stone that Mill Center Revy's coming back, but yeah. you know, we'll see what happens with him too because I think Q has, has almost solidified himself. as it, It's tough because like he said in our interview that it seems like they've got the best hooker combo yeah. So, you know, yeah. looking at those two, it's kind of tough depending on who's starting, you know, who's going to get to start one week yep. to the next. Maybe that plays into how he'll be next season. Maybe but, uh, a little bit uh, of a handcuff play there. You yeah, drop maybe. both of them. I mean, maybe you start viewing the front row position. Oh, don't get too of... deep into it, Ryan. Yeah. yeah hey, we, we, got, we got a long what off season. We ended last talking... weekend. Right. We got a long off season to break that all down. But uh, yeah, no, again, I got to give a huge shout out to Q. Thank you uh, to him again for taking the time to speak with us. Always a blast uh, mm -hmm. chatting with him. And, and hopefully uh, 
this is going to be stuff that we're going to be bringing all off season long to you uh fantasy ruckers uh fans you fantasy rucker community members hopefully bring on addicts. more guys uh bring on more guys onto this show to talk a little bit about their mlr experience and of course talk a little bit of fantasy mlr with them um i think again it gets a little bit more in depth now that we have the website and, and the additional stats as well um we're not having to uh, have that awkward moment on this show where we're telling q that he's uh you're 417 <laughs> yeah in the rankings out of 420 right yeah, yeah. so um yeah no nah, it's it's it was a lot of fun talking with him and, and hopefully we're gonna have a lot of fun talking with a lot of other guys we mentioned during the interview um hopefully gonna bring on andrew co on the show once again obviously he had that honorable mention um in the in the, the all mlr selections talk about his season and and what kind of went into kind of the the challenges that the new york iron workers face and obviously bring on a lot of other guys as well which we're which we're super excited for and on top of all that Hey, the fantasy grind never stops. And we're going to continue bringing you guys rankings, bring you guys how the, the, the 2023 season uh, kind of wrapped up, talk about some of the top players, talk about how that kind of reflects and, and impacts how we look the 2024 year. Because again, this was the first uh, year that we were able to use this in-depth stat system. And I think there's a lot to digest from it. So we're going to also do that all off season long. So a whole bunch to look forward to. So, hey, guys, I know it's the first weekend away. Van, you said at the top of the show that you were getting a little bit of the shakes because there's no fantasy fantasy mlr but hopefully that'll all be enough of you to kind of satisfy that craving until we can hit that 2024 year <laughs> yeah you know what i'm i'm uh, gonna fix my come down for next week all right yeah there you drink go drink lots of water i'll be all right the, well, the prescription the prescription is the fantasy rucker show man that, that that is that is the remedy that is that is all you need to keep that uh hey, to keep hey. that uh, addiction uh, right, right in the veins hey, we right back, the baby veins. We back. All right. Well, hey, uh, again, huge, uh, huge shout out to Andrew Quatrin. We're uh, we're super excited to have more interviews like that throughout the season. Um, again, shout out to all of our fantasy Rucker supporters. We always love your support and all everything that uh, you've uh, you've uh, given us in terms of helping Matt, blow some kisses. make fantasy no. MLR a reality here. So for Matt Yee, for Devin Vandy Vanderpool, I'm Ryan Yee, and we'll be back next week. Suck it, Vandy. You've been listening to the Fantasy Ruckers Show, bringing fantasy rugby to the masses, covering everything rugby from the MLR and beyond. We hope you enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review, and be sure to tell all your friends. We'll be back soon, but in the meantime, connect with us on social media at the Fantasy Ruckers. Till next time, this is the Fantasy Ruckers Show, signing off.